Hi everyone. Those of you that have been following my channel for a while will know that I absolutely love RGB LEDs. I love building projects with lots of RGB color and bling and I've kind of fallen in love with the APA 102, the little RGB LED that I use on the tiny Pico. And what I love about it is that it's got a data and a clock which means you don't have to worry about length of data and keeping your strips or, or matrices of RGB LEDs in sync. Don't have any issues with ESP32s when it comes to interrupts getting in the way of the data and getting flickering issues. You don't have to have custom drivers or libraries to implement RMT or something like that. With the data in the clock, you can update them really fast and always have reliable updates. The downside to them is they're quite expensive. They're about two to three times more expensive depending on how many you buy at a time. And so they're fairly prohibitive to use, but I love them. So I decided to start putting together some little matrix displays and there were two different flavors that I've been looking at doing and I've put them both together and I wanted to show them to you. So this is the schematic of the first concept that I'm working on. And as you can see, it's got 16 RGB LEDs going across and eight going down. So it's a matrix of 16 by eight. Now that doesn't look overly exciting, but if I go to the board view, here it is now, and they're all about 3.5 mil apart. So the pitch is 3.5 millimeters, which is pretty, pretty close. It's it definitely something that I could put together by hand if I needed to, but I'm definitely gonna put it together on the pick and place machine. So to give you an idea of how big this panel is right now, if I just turn the measure layer on, you can see that it's currently 56 by 28 millimeters. So it's pretty tiny, and there's 16 by eight. And if I go and open, the manufacturing panel. This is what it looks like on a green PCB. So it's pretty cool. It's uh, fairly tight together. I've managed to get all this together on a two layer board. Getting them closer together would have been a little bit of a problem on a two layer board. You'll see why it was important to use the spacing I'm using on the next design that I came up with. So that's the front and if I go to the back it uses two of the quick connectors that Sparkfun use for their I2C communication and Adafruit have started putting on their boards, basically to allow you to chain these panels together. So you've got a, a con in, which you pass at five volts ground data and clock, and then you've got a con out. So you can just connect another board and another board, and you can chain them together in any layout that you want, whether you want to go vertically, horizontally, or make a larger rectangle out of them. The layout for me was done horizontally because I want to chain maybe two or three of them together horizontally and make a really long strip. So maybe 64 by eight as an actual display. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I definitely could have used the back more for my routing, but I'm about to show you why I didn't. So this is the other version that I put together. From the front, it looks the same, but on the back, it's a little different. The back allows you to plug a tiny Pico directly into it and has some pads for a surface mount 2.1 millimeter DC barrel jack. The headers the Tiny Pico plug into are dual row 10 pin surface mount female headers. And the reason it's dual row is you can plug your Tiny Pico in and then have access to the pins on the second half of the row. So not only can you plug a Tiny Pico directly into this panel to drive it, but you can then plug other peripherals into it as well if you wanted to. Now, the reason I've got the, the five volt DC jack coming in is that powers the the APA 102s, they obviously can draw a lot of power. There's 128 APAs on there. So maximum amperage is way higher than what the USB can deliver, especially if you're gonna chain them together. So the Tiny Pico itself doesn't have any back feed protection on the USB. If I was to drive the Tiny Pico from the five volt pin from this DC barrel jack and then plug the USB in to be able to program the Tiny Pico, that could be a problem on some USB ports on some computers because it could back feed five volts back into the USB. So the way I've got around it on this particular design is the board itself on the back has the power jack coming in and then it has an LDO on there. So 5 volt comes in and then 3.3 volts comes out and then it's got a, a Schottky diode that prevents back feeding the 3.3 volts. And then the tiny Pico is actually powered from 3.3 volts, not from the 5 volt. Now obviously there's no point having any type of battery connection on this because a battery will die within minutes to half an hour driving 128 APAs. So I've kind of ruled out doing anything with a battery on this particular project. 
especially for me if I want to chain four of them together because that's going to be you know 512 LEDs. So the back of the board has the LDO which is sitting over here and that drives the tiny Pico and that's how I've solved the back feed and it's literally just a plug and play RGB matrix that the tiny Pico plugs into which is pretty cool. Now I also still want to put the quick connector on the end of it over here so you can have data out so you could technically have this one as the first and then you could use the other ones to chain multiple or you could just use the other one and use a different microcontroller to feed the power and the data in a different type of breakout board or something else now the problem with these that i face right now well there are several <laughs> let's be honest it's going to be a really expensive board so just the front side alone at the rate that i pay per reel for apas because i buy them on the reel three thousand at a time for the tiny pico production there's about thirty dollars or more aussie dollars of RGB LEDs just on the front of this panel. So that pretty much rules out me making these boards and selling them because you can buy a, a 64 by 32 RGB matrix, the ones that you know Brian has his breakout boards for and I've got a couple of them. I've, I think I was one of the first people to show them on my channel way back. You can buy them for half the price. So it doesn't make a lot of sense me trying to go to market with an RGB panel. That's not really what this was for. This was for some of my projects and I don't mind putting together something like this and using it in my projects because I can pick and place it quite easily. I've got all the components I need for this board here anyway, so it's not like I have to go out and invest a lot of stuff. All I'm doing is spending some money on some boards. They're two layer boards, they're not very big. I can uh, obviously panelize them, but cost wise, yeah, they're just, it's, it's crazy. Like it's, it's a really crazy thing for me to do. But another really important thing that is a problem for me right now is how would I mount them? As you can see, there is no through holes here anywhere. I've got the vias as small as I can get them for a two layer board for JLC PCB. If I went to four layers, I could get all of the, the vias even smaller. But there's no holes in the board on purpose because it's got to be a very clean front. That's why everything on the back is surface mount. So I don't know how I would mount and join two of these together. Now, obviously cable wise, I could join them using the quick connectors, but how would I actually mount them? So the measurements on the board are designed to butt up in any direction more panels and have a perfect seamless layout. One idea I had was to put some SMD pads on the back, maybe some pads over here, some pads over here, maybe here and here, here, you gotta be careful over here, and then make some little tiny joiner PCBs. So what you do is you'd lay two panels next to each other and then you'd solder the joiner PCBs across them to join them together. But that kind of feels a bit, ugh, I don't know, really not nice. Obviously I could, 3D print something that these would slot into if I wanted to make a longer panel. But yeah, this is something I need to solve still. And um, you know, typical Sion fashion, let's go and design the board and let's get everything ready to go. But how am I gonna actually utilize it in a project? Well, I don't know, but we'll worry about that later. So I need to solve that, but I've already got these headers here. I've got all the components I need except for the barrel jack because I had to find a, a surface mount barrel jack. I've used some oversized pads for them and then I'm putting in the stencil layer and expanded pads to make sure that I get an excess of solder coming in. So the actual solder is going to be sitting on the solder mask, in this case, around the edges. That way when it reflows, it'll suck all that solder back on and I'll get a really strong, thick level of solder holding the pads down. But I wanted to show everyone what I'm working on. Uh, am I going to make some? Yes, I am. Am I going to order some boards? I will. I'm going to order both type of boards once I put the quick connector on this one and I look forward to assembling them and having a play with them. But boy oh boy, is this a crazy, excessive, expensive <laughs> way of producing an RGB panel. But there you go, that's just me, to a T. Thanks for watching, thank you to all my patrons, you're awesome. I will catch you all next time, bye.